gospel text. Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What blasphemy from Jesus' lips. Who does he think he is to be going around forgiving sins? And this is, of course, what the scribes said about Jesus. And in their hearts, they thought truly evil things. There's no doubt about that. But there's something about this man is blaspheming that just hits me right to my core, right to my heart. Because that little phrase is nothing it is is actually just what they would expand upon in order to crucify Christ. This sentence alone. This man is blaspheming. This sentence, or this part of the sentence, I should say, is the very bedrock in which they used to crucify Christ. What happened in front of Caesar, what happened, or Pontius Pilate, what happened in front of the authorities, but that they called him a blasphemer. You have heard him in his words, blaspheming. Christ our Lord here. Blasphemy. Every single Good Friday, when I read the Passion of the Christ, there is one part that I come to read that I always tear up at. And it's not any one that you might think. It's this. And they slapped him. Every time I get to that sentence, I tear up. Not the crown of thorns. Not even the crucifixion. There's something human and wrong about us when it comes to he slapped him. Or they slapped him. Well, of course, they slapped him right in the mouth because he is the one who is blaspheming. Of course, we know that Christ is not blaspheming. He's doing the very thing that he came to earth to do. To forgive the sins of many. And I think that it's beautiful here when the friends of the paralytic literally brought him in carried him in and laid them or laid him in front of Jesus and they didn't say a single word not one word they just brought the paralytic in laid him before Jesus and the idea is have your way with him whatever you see fit do to this man these friends carried this man by faith not by hands they knew if they just laid him in front of Jesus that he would walk. That the paralytic would be paralyzed no more. But then Jesus doesn't do it. He does not do it. At least not at first. He says first to him, take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. Then, of course, the words, this man is blaspheming, comes along. And, of course, we talked about that. Christ did not blaspheme. He did the very thing that Christ does. He forgives the sins. And yet, here's that verse. Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. I wonder what was going through the mind of the paralytic when the first thing that he says is your sins are forgiven. Well, this doesn't help me walk does it? And yet, is it not much better that our sins would be forgiven and that we would enter into heaven able to walk? Be paralyzed in this world and yet have our sins forgiven so that we would enter into eternal life? 
Isn't it better for us to pluck out our eye rather than to have it sin in order to us to enter into heaven? The forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are in Christ. And so the very first thing he says to the paralytic is that his sins are forgiven. This man is speaking blasphemy. Well, if Christ is speaking blasphemy, then so am I. Because I stood right here and said, In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so if Christ is speaking blasphemy, then I'm speaking blasphemy. If Christ isn't the, the Messiah, if Christ isn't the one who died, if Christ isn't the one who rose, then my words are empty. However, what we see is that those words are not empty. Those words are full. And what are they full of? Mercy of Jesus Christ. The grace of the Messiah. And the love of that He has for us. And He has such love for us that not only does He forgive sins, but He says to us, rise and go home. Just picture this. These men brought Him in. I'm assuming four. Brought Him in in a type of gurney brought him in, laid him in front of Jesus. Jesus forgives his sins. And then Jesus says to him, rise, take the thing that, we, that they carried you in and go home. There's no doubt that Christ performs miracles every single day. And when times are hard, we pray to God that He would take the hard times away from us, that He would be with those who are lame and those who are in the hospital, those who are hurting, those who are doubting. He even comforts the mother, the father who loses children. He comforts those he says first, your sins are forgiven. And what happens when He says your sins are forgiven? The Holy Spirit takes that gurney, lifts Him up to Jesus in heaven once He's died. For, for when He rises and picks up His bed and goes home, it's only a temporary fix. The true, everlasting, walking is in heaven with Jesus. And so every one of us for every prayer can know this. Jesus answers them even if not in the way that we want. He does answer it this way in the end for all of us. Come my son, see me face to face with your own eyes. You are well. You are with me in eternal life. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Not the foretaste of the feast to come, but the feast that they feast on. The church triumphant. The ones who look to Jesus. No longer paralyzed. No longer hurting. No more cancer. No more COVID. No more anything. Just look to Christ. And from that point, we say this. My sins have been forgiven. And they look down upon us and they say these words. It's greater here than you could ever possibly imagine. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.